All right, uh, we are going to take this from the top and we're going to walk through everything, all right, and starting from the front. So, what we seek to do is we want to map out the flood hazard, okay? We're doing this on the Kentucky River and just to give you a sense of what it is and what it can look like, you know, there's all kind of projects that people have completed doing this kind of thing. All right, so the authority obviously is FEMA. And they have this, they have a website dedicated to the data and we'll explain everything about the data. Once you understand what the data is, then they have a viewer here. And it's a nice Esri ArcGIS little setup. And it's very easy to use, okay? All you have to do is zoom in and they have it set up by county. And for some reason, some counties are missing, which is really interesting. Uh, maybe they don't have flood risk. But anyway, you choose whatever county that you're interested in and some little box is supposed to pop up so that you can download the data. Okay, there it is. So you don't allow that. So you just click the county, whatever place you care about, it pops up. And then you can download it for the whole county or you can get just a little PDF of that area. So for residential people, that's probably what they would want, but we're gonna get the county, okay? And remember, we're looking at the Kentucky River, the part of it that comes through Frankfurt. So we're over here and for, for what I'm gonna show, I downloaded Franklin, Woodford and Anderson, I believe, those three, because they pretty much fully encompass pool four and pool five. And the little bit that uh, the little fingers that it doesn't catch, the, they fall <clears throat> in a part of the river where it meets after the pool four dam. Okay, so you're going to download those, you know, those three county files. All right, so then that brings us to ArcMap. And when you when you download those files, obviously you got to unpack them, and for each county. You see each one has its own folder. 21 is Kentucky, County 5, County 73, County 239. Hmm, that's interesting. But anyway, these are each of the counties. That one just doesn't quite make sense. There's only 220 counties. But anyway, inside they all have the same types of files. Okay same types of files and what we want to just look at real quick is in there there's a metadata and it launches automatically in this and if you scroll down if you scroll down to here for each of the files that you see listed over here base index bfe firm flood hazard area they're all listed right here there's kind of an alphabetical order to them and you scroll down and you find what you want okay and we'll discuss this stuff more and more but what we're after is actually all the way down here on the bottom and it's it's labeled this xs and what it is it's the cross sections of the stream bed and beyond and it has a, a, attributed to that line already the stream bed elevation, okay? And that's what this little video is gonna cover, stream bed elevation, okay? So remember, okay, so there's three folders, right? So I've already gone through the trouble earlier and started to combine this stuff. So in here already, somewhere I already have the things that I care about, flood hazard area, general structure, and those, uh, uh, cross sections, okay? And I merged those three from the three counties into a file that I can use at my leisure over here. So for example, here's my, my flood area map. And, you know, this is how I'm determining, you know, what, what what's the area we're gonna process and, and not, okay? But that's not what we're after just yet. So let's see, I have, so those profile lines, here they are, right? And you see that they have labels on them. They have labels on them, right? So uh, 
as we remember from our previous analysis, what we want to be able to do, because this is the stream bed elevation, right? For all the little streams that come in here and then, you know, superimposed on top of that, you have the Kentucky River that, that cuts through, right? And before and after the structures, you know, they have the, you know, whatever the elevations are. I'm not sure how big the drop is there. There you go. So, uh, all right, so what we can do, so once you've merged those things together, it's, uh, we are going to create, which I've already did here in a bunch of kind of different ways, the uh, triangular irregular network or something like that. Uh, but it's a series of triangles that uh, honors the values that are on the lines, okay? And, um, you know, creates basically what is stream bed elevation. So that's the, you know, that's the very bottom of the stream. So from now on, whenever we talk about gauge height or even discharge or whatever, we're about, we're about to know the volume from the, from the bottom of the stream bed, right? And then we'll, we'll know and then our elevations from there, right? Based on where the water's at, we'll have an easy time then calculating the volume for that for the whole, for the whole area, okay? So let me just show you how to do this real quick. So we have those lines and you've merged them together or however big of a data set you could assemble. And you might get lucky and be able to find it for the whole nation or the whole state. I could not locate that. And that site doesn't seem to, you know, want you to do that. So let's go to our toolbox here, right? It's under analysis tab, toolbox. And then we're just going to create in. Triangulated irregular network data set, okay? And all we have to do is feed it the feature, our lines here, and tell it which of uh, let's see, let's just have a look at that data actually while that tool's thinking. You see, it doesn't, <clears throat> doesn't want much information. Let's see, come here. I think I may have asked it too much, too quick. Okay, let's try that again. Let's open the attribute table. So for each line, you have uh, some information here about who it belongs to in terms of its family. And you have one of the columns. Here's stream bed elevation. Okay, so that's, that's the stream bed, the bottom of the, of the flow. And that's all that matters really here. Okay, so then in this tool, create 10, uh, let's give it a name. So I've been just naming these as I go because here I'm calling it water. But let's let's do let's call it what it is, stream bed, right? And then uh, uh, okay, a quick uh, you can actually do this in the data that that's I'm about to tell myself here because I haven't projected all of this into my common state plane or whatever I'm ultimately going to be using here. Okay, but you would have kind of done all of that on the front end before you got to this point, right? Because just as you assemble you, your data, you've already chosen your coordinate system that you're ultimately gonna work in. And as a rule, as all your data comes in, it's just, you know, the first chance it's automatically output into whatever that chosen coordinate system is. Okay, but I haven't did that, but here I can just kind of force it. But remember, this is projection on the fly over here. So, you know, the math is, uh, it might be loosey-goosey, okay? But uh, but the problem is, is that it's it, it needs to be a projected projected uh, coordinate system because it's doing math, right? <clears throat> it's doing math measuring distances over over straight lines. So I just need to choose something that is the state plane, right? Because ultimately that's that's what I mean. Most of my elevation data is in that. All of my lidar data that's that's going to be coming here that we'll be talking about is all of that stuff is all going to be in state plane. So by default, that's that. But you want to would have, have already wanted to project this, okay? This, all this data that you got from the FEMA, FEMA place. 
So anyway, you give it give it the feature, okay? Give it the lines, and then right here, it just wants to know. Uh, give it the lines. They're my merged lines, and then and then which which of the fields you know has the value that I'm looking for. And it's stream bed elevation. All right. Now here, okay. Now let me say that I have not most fully evaluated and investigated all of the ins and outs of how this is implemented in this software. Okay, I will. But I think, you know, soft would be a little more smooth of a transition from heights and hard would be very much the opposite. Okay. And, and, until I can see otherwise, uh, you know, in principle and intuitively, a hard line makes makes the most sense, especially when you consider the streams coming in here from the left, from the west, they're at a higher elevation, significantly higher elevation than the Kentucky River that is uh, in a planar way supposed to be cutting through here, okay? But um, because geometry wouldn't allow it, the data is not going to allow them to you know, kind of cut through. They you know they have to they have to cut somewhere. They have to drain somewhere, and somebody's already did all of the hard work by the way that they created these lines here that they made available for us to make all those decisions so that we don't have to. You can already see right here where it's gonna you know kind of filter uh, filter in right because the water you know it's actually got to show you the way the water would really be really be draining so. Kudos to FEMA for supplying these lines already. In an earlier exercise, we we did our own lines, right? But they were just lines for fun. They, you know, we, we didn't have any serious consideration about you know what they actually were. Okay. So we're just gonna go with the default on everything. Okay, this is an interesting little tidbit here. It was one of the parameters we could check. I recommend you check that out. We're not gonna cover it right here. Okay. And there we are. So here I got Streambed. Okay, this is the new file that it just made, Streambed. Uh, I can't really speak on this, this line exactly right here. Uh, but in, anyway, this 10 now, these triangles formed all together to make this that you see. And pretty much, Now, I did this several times using the different parameters. And you really can't change much. Okay, there's so much going on here. You can shift around the, the trends a little bit, but um, for the most part, it, you know, it's, it's very obvious. So there it is, right? So that is, you know, all things considered equal, that's the stream bed as a, a plane, right? And it's you know, as far as we know, spatially accurate. And if you just investigated a little bit, uh, the streams kind of behave as you would expect. You know, the bends are kind of, you know, I guess, I guess it makes sense, kind of like a switchback in a trail. The streams in, in similar ways appear to be doing similar, similar things. So uh, I don't know, this uh, hydrology isn't, isn't necessarily my, my thing. Uh, well, it isn't in my thing at all. Uh, but but you could probably just look into it real quick and 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 find evidence that this is indeed you know some characteristic behavior. Okay, and uh, and what? Okay, uh, we're not going to cover it here, but we're also doing this project in parallel. We're doing it in R. Uh, R can much more efficiently handle uh, and manage the uh, lidar data sets, um, but believe it or not, we cannot do this this line to 10 exercise. So, uh, and then now if you wanted, okay, now that you have that, the, the water service or whatever, if you wanna use it like for calculations and stuff, you simply need to uh, turn it into a raster, okay? 10 to raster. And, uh, and then here you just, you just turn it into a raster then that you can use in raster calculator or uh, however you're doing your, any extractions you may be doing or, or whatever, right? Stream bed as raster. And 
for the out for the output data type, floating point versus integer is a significant uh, file size. I think we're going to be able to get away with using only integers, right? And just only be thinking in terms of like square square foot voxels, right? I, th I think that's going to work out real good. I don't think it matters if it's 1.2 feet, right? It's one foot or it's two foot, right? Uh, so, but we'll, we'll talk more about that too as we go. But uh, I actually did go with floating point. It's a huge file that it's going to write out. And, uh, you know, integer is considerably smaller. But anyway, you hit the go button on that. And, you know, it's over here somewhere. Okay, I'm not going to write it out again, but it's, you know, it's there. So you just run that tool and, and there it is. So, uh, right. So then there you go. So that is, again, that is the stream bed elevation. So in, in terms of our, in terms of our gauge, let's turn some of this stuff off quick and just make sure we're oriented. Okay. We're on the Kentucky River and this is, you know, number four. Number four. Right, number dam, no, number four dam, and then down here is number five. All right, and then so now for the whole area, we just created this stream bed. All right, and that's where, you know, that even on the hills and everything, right? That, that's that's zero, right? So if if you got a gauge right here at four, which we do, at zero point zero zero point zero matches whatever this 10 elevation is at wherever exactly the gauge is. We don't know. We do know the elevation of it. So we, we know enough, right? We know enough, but it'd be better if we knew exactly where that circle was positioned. And then we could even check in our work, but whatever, we have elevations for it on the site. So, so there we are, okay? So this video is gonna stop here and then we'll pick up and, and we're, we're going to go through all the steps in R and we're going to do it in R Pro. So, uh, so it'll be cool.